Six years ago, when I was 14, I decided to try coding for the first time. Fast forward to this year, I'm about to turn 21 and I've already earned over $100,000. I've worked at three different software engineering internships with a fourth one upcoming this winter as a backend engineer at Autodesk. I'm also about to release my first ever startup where I built it entirely from scratch on my own. And I also have a community of over 140,000 software developers who actively follow me. And this is all while I'm still a university student. So let me show you how I got here in just 2,287 days. It all started back when I was 14 and I got persuaded to take an intro to computer science course in high school. This course covered the bare basics in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I got so hooked into building something from scratch on my own that I would even go watch YouTube video tutorials on my own time. I still remember that feeling of building out my first ever HTML website. It was like a recipe generator or something like that. And I wanted to show every single one of my friends and parents immediately because I was so proud of my work. That feeling never left me and it got me hooked into coding. Now at that time, just like the majority of 14 year olds, I was absolutely addicted to video games. I would run home from school to play about three or four hours of FIFA every single day. And then on the weekends, I would play a bunch of COD and Fortnite. As time went on, I started to slowly replace this gaming addiction with a desire to code more projects. And it ended with me building out my first ever true coding project, which is this Flappy Bird game. I ended up meeting up with this family friend who just wanted a game to play in his free time, and I wanted to build that for him, so that's what that project was. It was only built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, no frameworks and you could tell because look how bad quality that game is. That then takes me to 15 where I started learning Java in high school. This course was just on all the basic syntax of Java. Think, how do you do multiplication? How do you print certain things? What are for loops? What are while loops? what gets outputted from specific for loops, that kind of stuff. Now, although that course didn't have any cool coding projects, what I can tell you is that solidified my desire to go into software engineering. So at age 16, when everyone has to make the most stressful decision of their life in picking their future career path for university, I knew 100% what I wanted to get into, which was software engineering. So what I did, because I'm Canadian, I applied to every single Canadian major university and ended up getting scholarships from Waterloo, Toronto and UBC, but after all of this, I ended up choosing to attend McGill. Now, I started university as a freshman at 17 years old. This was post-COVID, so just like everybody, I did not want to do any work and all I wanted to do was go out, hang out with my friends and socialize because I was so deprived of that. So to be completely honest with you, the first three months of my time at university, I did absolutely nothing. But then November came around and all of a sudden I started hearing about my friends in other universities already having internships lined up for that summer and I felt so behind. So I would go to the library every single day for eight hours a day and just grind out this coding project that I'm about to show you. So it starts in two parts. The coding project itself is a Premier League match predictor. But what makes it so impressive is what I'm about to share with you right now. So I am someone who's incredibly interested in the Premier League and I wanted to work with something that I'm interested in for obvious reasons. I highly recommend this for you guys. It's a cheat code by the way, because in any interviews, when you're able to talk passionately about something and you could connect with an interviewer on a human level with that passion, you're gonna stand out so much in any interview you take. But anyways, moving on, I found this set of YouTube tutorials online and it was absolutely perfect. It showed me how I could get all of the data for the Premier League match predictor to begin with. After watching that tutorial and doing my own research and practicing, I ended up building a data scraper using Python and Beautiful Soup to take all the matches off of FBREF and put it into a CSV file. At this point in time, I had almost no experience with Python, but because I was already familiar with another language in Java, it was actually relatively straightforward for me to just adapt the different syntax. Honestly, just thinking about it right now, it's crazy that I was able to do that without GPT. What a different world we live in right now. After I had this CSV file, I had to figure out a way to actually get the data out of it into my Premier League match predictor. And that's when I did some research and found out about databases, specifically Postgres SQL databases. I spent around a week or two going through this beginner course on SQL so I could learn all the relevant syntax. And then after all of this, I ended up figuring out how to migrate this CSV file to a Postgres SQL database. Little did I know that that action alone would get me my first internship. I then went ahead and watched the second part of the tutorial course with the Premier League match predictor. 
I was using SQL queries to get data from that database and feed it to the Premier League match predictor, which was built with the random forest classifier in scikit-learn. And when I tell you that the coding project itself sounds crazy impressive and scary, but in reality it's only like 40 lines of code and you could do it in a few days, it's actually mind blowing to me. All in all, this project ended up impressing a recruiter at the Government of Canada. They were looking for someone to join their summer team, specifically with experience working with Python and with data with SQL. I ended up starting this internship around May 1st, and my task was to build a Python-based migration pipeline using Azure as well. Towards the end of the internship, I had a lot of experience working with Python and SQL, and so much so that they asked me to stay on during the rest of the school year part-time, but I had to turn it down for personal reasons. But as you can see, learning data, especially through Python and SQL, is one of the best things you could do for your career early on. So that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, DataCamp. DataCamp isn't like any other course you'll find online. It has over 500 courses, it's interactive and completely beginner friendly, but most importantly, it actually teaches you the skills that you will be using on the job. As you just saw, my first internship was working with Python and SQL, and because I knew these two things early on, I was able to land an internship in my freshman year. At DataCamp, they have a heavy emphasis on Python, which is the number one language for data science. And they also make sure you master SQL because this is essential for any data-driven role you want in the field of software engineering. One of the best things is they follow a project-based learning model, which is the number one way to learn how to code. This hands-on approach allows you to incrementally increase your project with actual tangible results that you could put on your resume. You start with something as simple as creating data dashboards and you could end up building very complicated machine learning models on your own. But why should you bother using DataCamp? In today's tech-driven world with AI on the rise, data is king. Whether you're a current computer science student, a professional looking for a career change, or just someone that wants to bulletproof their future, learning data science is non-negotiable. Employers are actively hiring for these roles and the salary speaks for itself. So you need to check out DataCamp right now with the link in the description. It is easily the best investment you can make in yourself this Black Friday with a 50% off. Just start today, I promise you will not regret it. Anyways, let's get back into the video. After the internship, I had a hunger to be successful as a software engineer. I dedicated on average six hours to learning how to code every single day. I already knew JavaScript pretty thoroughly, so for me learning React.js wasn't as complicated as it might be for a complete beginner. But what I did is what I recommend everybody who's learning any coding language or framework do. I started by heading over to react.dev, which is the framework's own documentation and tutorials on the coding framework. I had read through all the documentation and maybe around 30% of it stuck. And then I went onto YouTube and watched a crash course on React.js and I think at that point I understood about 65% of it. Now not enough to build up anything from scratch on my own and I think that's the hardest hurdle to get over as a beginner. So I started by going back to React.dev and building out their tutorial tic-tac-toe project. After getting some of that hands-on learning experience, I went over to YouTube and looked through all of these React.js tutorials that were available. Now, I was told by some upper years that your coding portfolio is as essential as your resume as a software engineer, and they could not be more correct. So I thought, what better than to build out my coding portfolio with React.js from a tutorial so that I could learn all of the fundamentals and actually have something to show to recruiters. So I ended up watching a bunch of different videos until I found the one that interested me the most. And that was this tutorial by Slobodan. And what I would do is not copy the code line by line. I would watch in 30 minute increments, pause the video and try to type out everything that I just learned and then also try to put my own twist on things. This is what allowed me to actually understand the fundamentals of React.js and to this day, anytime I want to learn a new coding language or framework, I follow that exact roadmap. Now to walk you through this coding portfolio, it basically had a brief introduction of me, my about me section which in a cool and interactive way showed off all my technical skills, I then had a brief work experience section which showed all my work experience, and then most importantly, I had a coding project section where I could include every single coding project I've ever worked on. Right now it's filled with some crazy projects like an AI chatbot and a security authentication that I shared on YouTube and some more impressive coding projects that I'm about to share with you right now. Now to learn Spring Boot, I did this entire process 
all over again. But let me put you on to this absolute legend. His name is Amigos Code. And honestly, I think I owe him for my second internship. I ended up binge watching three or four of his three hour long Spring Boot tutorials. And who knew Spring Boot would be so in demand for software engineers. I then started by building out my first ever backend server, which was for this coding project. In doing so, I built out my first ever coding project that got me big tech interviews and it's this fantasy Premier League app. The app itself is a fantasy Premier League stats hub where anybody that uses the fantasy Premier League game could go ahead and search for specific players by their name or their nationality, position, etc. Now because this was in full stack development and it was a unique coding project that I was so passionate about, when it came to interviews, I absolutely killed them. I finally got that one company that took a chance on me, which was TRC as a backend engineering intern. So that summer at 19 was a major turning point for me. I spent that summer working with Spring Boot and most importantly, AUS for the first time ever. Now, if you're not familiar, AWS is a cloud platform with a bunch of different services. In particular, I was building serverless workflows, which basically automated a bunch of these processes in the backend servers. Unfortunately, during this time, I also broke my ankle playing competitive soccer. But that is what birthed this social media channel. Out of pure boredom and to try to stay productive with my time, I started posting on Instagram and TikTok just for the fun of it. I always wanted to be a YouTuber when I was growing up and I finally saw an opportunity to do that. My content started to quickly take off and I surmassed tens of thousands of followers very quickly. Because of this, at 20, I started to get more internship offers the next year. After applying to over 300 internships, I ended up getting an offer from Goldman Sachs, ADP, Chipotle, yes, you heard me right, and finally a return offer from TRC for all of the great work I did for them the year before. I chose to return to TRC simply because I learned so much and that's invaluable to me. And knowing that I fit in with the team, they respected my values, was just a perfect thing for me at the time. This internship ended up focusing more on machine learning where I got to experience working with LLMs, including BERT models, and ended up building out my own machine learning algorithm to predict software engineering requirements and their dependencies. For example, when a client gave their PDF with all the things they wanted done, my algorithm would use natural language processing to figure out what the requirements are and in what order someone should do them in order to give out everything the client wants. Now, while all this was happening, my social media started to explode to over 100,000 followers. And with all this attention I was getting, I ended up getting reached out by Wasi, the CEO of Empor. Empor is Canada's first ever student exclusive marketplace, and he wanted me to be the CTO to bring his vision to life. I could never say no to an opportunity like that, so for the next six months, I spent countless nights staying up to 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., what would be one of the best coding projects I've ever built myself from scratch. I ended up teaching myself so much, including webhooks and web sockets in a Spring Boot backend, how to build real-time chatting with Superbase and Spring Boot, and then also including features like Stripe integration in a Next.js frontend, and I also had to figure out how to use caching with Redis to support over a thousand active users and how to let users upload and store their images, all of that. And honestly, this entire process was one of the best learning experiences of my life. And now I'm in McGill's Lean Dobson startup program, so I'm finally getting some recognition for all the hard work that I put in. And yes, Empor is out right now in its beta. You could go ahead and join the waitlist, or maybe if you're watching this later, you could go ahead and sign up right now. That brings me to right now at 20 with my birthday in three weeks. After going to my career fairs and applying for more 2025 internships, I ended up getting a winter offer to work at Autodesk as a backend engineering intern. So while managing two businesses out of my dorm room, them being Empor and the Swear Codes community, I am in a position where I'm so proud of myself and all of the hard work that I've done. And it's all because 2,287 days ago, I made the best decision of my life to learn to code. If you're debating whether or not you should start learning to code, I cannot recommend it more. And for all of you who are on the journey right now, stick with it. It's one of the most rewarding things you'll ever go through. If you've made it this far, make sure to comment down below what your favorite part about your own journey was. And remember, I'm just your normal guy that put in that extra bit of work to get to where I am right now. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't compare yourself to anybody. That's the worst thing you could do. Remember, everyone has their own path to success. Keep showing up every single day and you will get there. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe.
Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.